In this tutorial, I'm going to use the northwest corner method to find the initial basic feasible solution of the transportation problem that has uh, three sources F1, F2, and F3 for destinations A, B, C, and uh, D. What is in the small squares there, like the 14 there, and that's uh, the unit cost from uh, source F1 to destination A, the cost of transporting one unit from F1 to destination A. And when you are having the supply there, like the 100 that we have there, and that's the supply capacity for source F1, and uh, the ones at the bottom there, the demand, that's the demand requirement for each uh, of the destinations. So to use uh, the northwest corner method, we start by looking at the top left hand corner cell, which is this one here that I've highlighted. Then we look at uh, the supply capacity there, say 100. The demand requirement is a 30. And then we take the minimum of uh, the 100 and the 30 that I've highlighted there. The minimum is a 30. So what we have to do is we have to allocate 30 units in uh, this cell. But the moments we allocate 30 units in this cell, we have uh, met the demand requirements for destination A. We can no longer allocate anything in uh, this cell column again. So I'll cross out and I'll cross out indicating that we can no longer allocate since we have met the demand requirements for this destination A. Since we're now done with uh, the first column, we move on to the second column, the B there. And we have to look at the top column there, which is uh, this one here that I've highlighted. And to see how much we can allocate, we consider the supply. It's a hundred. But we have to take note that we have already allocated a 30 in that row. So when you are looking at uh, the supply capacity for F1, we are now left with uh, 100 minus 30, which is a 70. So when you are looking at the supply constraints, we are looking at a 70. Then for the demand, we are looking at the 50. Then we take the minimum of the 70 and the 50, and it gives us the 50. So we have to allocate 50 units there. At the moment we allocate the 50 units there, that means we can no longer allocate any more in uh, this uh, column. So I would have to cross out, indicating we cannot allocate there, indicating we cannot allocate there, just because we have already met the demand requirements of 50. I now move on to the next one, which is uh, the column C now. That's where we are, because we are done with the column A, B. And uh, I will look at uh, this cell here. And when you are looking at this cell, the supply there is 100. But we have already allocated a 50 and a 30. So for the supply capacity of uh, F1, they will be looking at a 100 minus 50 minus 30, which gives us a 20. And then on the demand, we are looking at the 65. So we are looking at the minimum, which gives us uh, a 20. And the moment we allocate the 20 there, who have uh, now reached the supply capacity for F1. So we can no longer allocate any more in this row. So I'll cross out because we have already reached the supply capacity for source F1. So if we can no longer allocate on the F1D there, we are now moving to the cell F2C, and this one here. And to see how much we can allocate, I look at uh, on the 40 there, the supply, and then uh, for the demand, we are having 65. But for the 65, we should take note that we've already allocated a 20 in this column. So what we'll be looking at is uh, 65 minus 20, which is 45. So we are looking at the minimum of 45 and 40. So we have uh, to allocate a 40 there. And the moment we allocate 40, we will defer reached the supply capacity for F2. So we'd have to cross out this one since we can no longer allocate any more. We move on to this cell F3C. And to see how much we can allocate, we look at uh, the supply, it's a 60. And uh, the demand we are having is 65. But for the 65 there, we have already allocated 40 and 20 in uh, that column. So we are looking at 65 minus 40 minus 20, which gives us a 5. 
So we are looking at the minimum of 5 and 60, which gives us a 5. So we can allocate uh, 5 units there. And uh, we are now left only with a uh, one cell which has no allocation, which is this one. So we can uh, look at uh, the supply, it's 60. But the 60 there, we should take note that we have already allocated the 5 there. So we'll be looking at uh, 60 minus 5, which is a 55. And when you're looking at the demand, it's a 55. So what we'd have to allocate in this cell there is a 55. So now that we have uh, made uh, all the possible allocations, we should now just check if our things are balancing on the allocations and the supply and the demand. So I'll go on and check row by row and column by column. For the first row there, we are having for the supply there is 30, 50, 20. And when you add them there, they give us the 100, which is the supply. So for this one, you are okay. For the second row, we are having an allocation of 40. Our supply is 40. So for this one, it's okay. And then for the third one, we are having allocations of 5 and 55, which adds to 60. Our supply is 60 there. So for this row, we are okay. I now move on to the columns. For the first column, we are having an allocation of 30. Our demand is 30, so for this one is balanced. And the next one, we are having an allocation of 50. Our demand is 50, so for this one is balanced as well. And the next one, we are having allocations of 20, 40, and 5. When we add them, it gives us a 65, which tallies with the demand there, 65. For destination D there, the last column, we are having an allocation of 55 which tallies with uh, the demand of uh, the 55 there. So what we have done is okay there. We now need to go on and uh, interpret what uh, that table is saying. So I will draw another table where we have the destination, the allocation, and the cost. What we are saying is uh, from, from F1 to destination A, we are allocating 30 units. 30 units at a unit cost of 14, which gives a total of 420, deposit to be 30 times 14. From F1 to B, we are allocating 50 units. 50 units at a unit cost of 16, and the cost will be 50 times 16, which gives us 800. From F1 to C, we are allocating 20 units. 20 units at a unit cost of 12, and the cost will be 20 times 12, which gives us 240. From F2 to C, we are allocating 40 units. 40 units at a unit cost of 10, the cost will be 40 times 10, which gives us 400. From F3 to C, we are allocating 5 units. 5 units at a unit cost of 8, and the cost will be 8 times 5, which gives us a 40. From F3 to D, we are allocating 55 units. 55 units at a unit cost of 15, and the cost will be 55 times 15, which gives us 825. I now go on and uh, sum those costs so that we get the total cost of, for the transportation problem. And when we add those costs, we get 2,725. So the initial basic feasible solution is giving us a cost of uh, 2,725.